Hey guys, it's Jess, and I'm so excited to be sharing another May May Made It design team video with you guys today. Today's video features the stamp set May May's Two Lips, which features all of these different mouths or lips, and the cute little speech bubble, and some really awesome sentiments. So to get started with my card today, I cut a piece of white cardstock to four by five and a quarter because I knew I wanted to mount this on an A2 size card base and this is my kind of go-to. Um, I always just start with my smaller piece. Sometimes I trim it down after I've made my background but today I lived on the edge and cut it down first instead of doing it after the fact. Um, so I'm stamping out one of the mouths first and I stamped way more than I needed to because I wasn't sure um, how my next portion of the card was going to come together. Um, you'll see as we go along kind of what my plan is for the card but um, I started with a little more area covered than I knew that I would need. Um, so I'm just using two pairs of lips or two mouths, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> um, from the stamp set to fill in the space here. You guys know how much I love stamping my own backgrounds and using smaller images to create backgrounds. Um, I really like the effect that you can get and I think it makes for a really cool card. So I finished stamping everything out and I have my other sheet of cardstock there. So this one is black um, and what I'm doing is I'm using my mini misty and I'm taking the speech bubble. I'm going to lay that into my mini misty and stamp it with embossing ink from Brutus Monroe. This is a clear embossing ink but it's not sticky like most of the other embossing inks that you can find. So it stays wet a little bit longer and it is um, so it's like an oil based ink um, and it doesn't dry the same way as quickly as the other embossing inks that I've used. So it gives you more time, <laughs> which I need because I'm a slow crafter, uh, to get your stuff right where you want it and put that embossing powder on it. So once I stamped my image out, I pulled out my coffee filter and my alabaster embossing powder. This is a great super fine detail um, embossing powder from Brutus Monroe as well. Um, for some reason, I think there's a lot of moisture in my house today because even though I treated my surface with the powder tool first, I still had a lot of stray embossing powder. So I ended up spending a lot of time trying to get all this powder off um, and I ended up making some mistakes and having to recoat it again. Um, but eventually I did get most of that off and was able to go ahead and heat emboss it. So once I finished with my little chat bubble, I did pull out that embossing ink again and I moved on to my first part of my sentiment, which says, sure am missing you. Um, I really like the sentiments in this stamp set. I think there's some really cool ones that you don't really see a whole lot of uh, in other stamp sets. Um, so I really like that about this. It's more unique um, and it definitely stands apart. And I really like this font also. Um, it's really whimsical, but also, I don't know, it's trendy. <laughs> um, so like I said, I'm using that same embossing powder. I had my same issues with the moisture. I don't know. I think I'm just having a little bit of um, extra humidity in my craft room lately as the weather warms up maybe. Um, so I did the same thing with my heat tool, went ahead and melted that embossing powder, and then I grabbed my fussy cutting scissors from Brutus Monroe, um, and I am cutting around the edge of my chat bubble. So almost like this was a die cut, right? It's got that black border like it would if I had cut it with a die cut. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and use those scissors to trim all the way around that so that my speech bubble is the bottom of the card and that's all I'm left with when I go to layer it on top of my white panel. So I did go ahead and layer that right on top so that I was able to um, kind of cover up a lot of the bottom portion. I played around a lot with this to figure out where I wanted it. Um, originally I wanted it more down towards the bottom of the card like this, but then I was thinking, well I stamped this whole background, I might as well show it off. Um, and so I kind of was just trying to figure out where I liked it best. Um, the thing you guys will learn about me if you haven't already is that I craft by the seat of my pants. <laughs> um, I don't usually plan things out in advance because I feel like this gives me a better range of creativity. I seem to create better when I just sort of go with the flow and create as it comes to me rather than trying to have a big plan at the start. 
So I figured out where I wanted to put it, where I was happy with it. Um, and then you'll notice obviously that this leaves me with a really, really tall card and lots of extra stuff up at the top. Now the easy thing here is I can just go ahead and put that into my paper trimmer, trim off the excess, and now I'm left with a perfect four and a quarter, well four by five and a quarter inch panel. I'm gonna go ahead and turn some music on while I do this coloring since there is quite a bit of it and I sped it up a lot. Um, and I will see you guys here in just another minute once all the coloring is done to walk you through the rest of the card. Okay, now my coloring is all done and I have grabbed another sentiment to add to the top of my card panel. I wasn't sure if I wanted it down at the top or down at the top, down at the bottom or up at the top, but I did end up deciding to put it up at the top because there was a lot of empty black space up there and I didn't want to cover up my cute lips that I spent all that time coloring. <laughs> um, so I went ahead and popped it back into my mini Misty, did the same process here where I used my anti-static powder tool and I use the embossing ink from Brutus Monroe, ink up my stamp and press that lid closed so that I can get a good impression. The reason that I do it in the mini Misty, uh, as opposed to using a stamp or acrylic block, whatever, is I am awful at getting things stamped the way I want them and not having them be crooked. And also I'm really, really bad at lining things up again should the stamp need to be re-inked and stamped again. So I always just put it in my mini Misty, especially for sentiments. Um, that way, just in case anything is messed up, I can always stamp it again, I can ink it again, and I don't have all of those issues. Um, so I did go ahead and use a tiny little piece of a Swiffer duster cloth. Um, I use these a lot to get the extra powder and things like that off of my desktop, so I figured I would use it a little bit up at the top. Um, and then I went ahead and uh, heat set that as well. Now to add a little bit to my, uh, well, the top of my card, I went ahead and used some ribbon that I had on hand. I have a boatload of ribbon, you guys, and I never end up using it anymore. And so I've been trying to incorporate it into more cards lately. <laughs> so I had this cute polka dot one with, uh, it's like a red sheer polka dot pattern and I thought it would go really cute with these lips so I went for it. Um, I left the tails long to start with because I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. Um, to adhere these I used a little bit of my ATG to, um, this is just a double-sided adhesive, to adhere that to my card. Um, I just put a little bit on each side so that when I wrap the edges around it sticks there and holds it in place. Um, I did it this way because this ribbon is sheer so any adhesive that I put behind it you would be able to see and I didn't want that showing through. Uh, so once I had that all ready to go and in place, I used a little bit of super glue <laughs> to hold this where I needed it. Um, now I chose super glue because honestly it just, um, it dries faster <laughs> and that is what works best for me. I like the other adhesives, the liquid adhesives, but for ribbons and things like that, I tend to just use super glue because I'm super impatient. Um, I also did go ahead and pop this bad boy up on some foam tape from Brutus Monroe. This is the white tape, obviously, and it does come in black as well. Um, once I was done with that, I peeled the little backers off so that I could pop it up onto an A2 size card base. Um, and I just did that as a top folding card out of white cardstock. 
If you guys have trouble getting the backers off of this, this tape is extremely sticky. Um, so if you do have trouble getting that backer off, what I try to do is actually rip the tape at slight, like at a slight angle. And I find that that helps leave sort of a little tail of the backer hanging off. And it gives me a little gripping point to be able to rip that backing off with. So you might try that if you ever have any trouble getting the backer off of that foam tape. <laughs> um, like I said, I use the super glue to go ahead and apply the, um, bow, the little ribbon. If you're interested in seeing how I tie these perfect little bows using that fork, <laughs> um, you can head over to the video. I will have it linked down in the description below where you can check out my short little video on how to tie those cute little bows. To finish off the card, I did go ahead and grab my white gel pin. This little guy is on its last leg. I know I've been saying that for a while, but it really is going out, I promise. Um, it's still got a little life in it left in it though. So here we go. I used it to add a little bit of faux stitch detailing to the outside edges of my card just to give it a little bit more of a finished look. And that finished off the card for today. I really hope you guys love it. If you did, be sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more inspiration and videos like this in the future. Um, hugs and love to all of you and I will see you guys again really soon in another video.